Okay, today we're going to show you how to make some 5-1-1 potting mix, primarily used for peppers. Um, what you see here is the in ma main ingredients of the mix. This is the primary five part of the mix. This will be uh, one of the one parts, and the perlite will be the other uh, one part of the 5-1-1. We also have some pelletized lime and some osmocote, which is a fertilizer. And those are the uh, main ingredients of the 5-1-1 mix. Once you empty the uh, bags of uh, pine mulch or pine bark, what it is is it should be uh, pine bark uh, between about one eighth and one half inch chunks. Uh, you generally can't find it packaged that way, so what you have to do is buy it in a bag that's got varying sizes and then sift it. And this is what's in the bags now. And these are what we're going to use to sift it. Here we have the half inch sifter. So this will sift out everything bigger than one half inch. Then we run it through this sifter. And this will filter out everything below one eighth of an inch. So what you'll have is uh, left is everything between one eighth and one half inch. And that's your, your target size. And uh, when we get done, we should wind up with about half half of this product as usable. So we'll get started and we'll show you how to sift it. Okay, now we're going to fill it up with a couple shovelfuls of raw bark. This is the bark that comes right out of the bags. And then we're going to take the sifter over here to the trailer. And sift it. And what we should wind up with left in the sifter is just the bark over one half inch. A little more, Sam. Okay. Okay. And this is what you have after you get done sifting it. Those are all about one inch pieces and, and below. Get a couple more shovelfuls. Alright. Hold it up a little so they can see the stuff coming out. There you go. Okay. Then we're going to dump the large bark back in this bucket. And what I do is I collect that and I use that for actual mulch around the house. Okay. And okay, we're all done sifting. This is the um, all the 
stuff that sifted out and it's anything below a half an inch okay and this is the part of it that was above a half an inch which stayed in the strainer we've we've uh, accumulated that and I'll just use that to uh, mulch around the house and now what we're gonna do is re-sift this through the 1 8 inch sifter and anything below an eighth of an inch should sift out and all we'll have left is uh, 1 8 to 1 half inch product inside the sifter and that's what we're looking for and we'll just uh, save that in here and that'll be what we use to uh, make the 511 mix And we're just going to be sifting back onto the tarp now since the tarp is clean. And it'll be the uh, just the real fine stuff left on the tarp. And what you have left is the 1 8 to 1 half inch product. A little more Sam. Okay, and we're just gonna keep that in the blue Tupperware bucket. All right. Windy, huh? Okay. Okay, and now what we're going to do is just finish up and I'll show you what we got when we're done. Okay, and this is what we wind up with. This is the, uh, these two buckets here are the usable product. Uh, all the stuff between 1 8 and 1 half inch. This is what we sifted out. All the stuff below an uh, eighth of an inch. It's kind of hard to see on the brown tarp, but uh, probably come close to filling a five gallon pail. Um, and again, this is the uh, bark that's above one half inch, which I'll use for mulch. Um, the finer stuff, I was thinking about maybe trying to use that to uh, start seeds. I'm gonna experiment with that this, this uh, fall and winter. But anyway, this is what you wind up with. You got medium, medium sized bark. Actually, it'd be a, a small sized bark uh, by uh, landscaping standards, but uh, um, it's pretty uniform. There is some sapwood in here, um, more than I'd really like, but. Uh, uh, this is the only source I found for pine bark at all, so I can't be too too choosy um, the sapwood in the uh, um, Mix isn't isn't optimal 
but uh, there's not too much so it'll be okay so that's what we wound up with we wound up with about 25 gallons of usable product we used uh, four bags of the pine mulch um, four two cubic foot bags I think there's about seven gallons in a cubic foot so that's about 15 oh approximately 15 gallons per bag um, that'd be yeah right around half that's what I found I come up with is about half half usable product out of a bag it should be higher than that but uh, again you got to go with what you can get so next we'll uh, start mixing it up and uh, getting it ready to plant peppers in okay now we're gonna make the mix the 511 of course it's five parts of the bark I'm gonna start by adding about two Two. Okay. Next, I'm going to add the perlite. Perlite adds in drainage, much like the bark does itself. Um, I should probably be. Sifting this uh, perlite out, but it gets real dusty, and I don't want to deal with it, so just uh, putting it in. Okay, there's one, and this is about half of one of those, so I'm put close to two of these in. Okay. <coughs> Okay, <laughs> it's dusty stuff. It's better if you do it on a windy day. Um, two parts bark, one part perlite. Then I'm going to add the Osmocote. This is a good slow release uh, fertilizer for peppers. What I need to put in here is one cap full. Actually, two capfuls. Or no, one. I'm sorry. Okay. That's a slow release fertilizer. Okay, and then lime. That helps with the calcium. Um, <clears throat> two, two, what are these? Quarter up? About a half, half cup, I guess. One. And this is pelletized lime. <coughs> Excuse me. You can get that in just about any garden center. It's real cheap, about, uh, I don't know, a few bucks for a great big 50 pound bag, but it's it's like cement. It's heavy. Um, this perlite this is four cubic feet, but it only weighs about, I don't know, 10 pounds maybe. That's real light. Now, uh, I had two, two parts bark. I need three more parts of bark. One. Two. Three. Okay. Now I'm just going to mix it all up. Oh, the other one part, I forgot. Bag's already broke open, so I had to put it 
the the one part it can be this one part of soil type product can be anything from potting soil to garden soil to top soil um, can be a lot of different things I've just um, had this left over from last year and other projects and so that's what I'm using for the uh, third main ingredients so you got the five parts bark five or one part uh, perlite and one part soil which I use the the Fafard 52 there and uh, then I added the uh, Osmocote and the lime you could also add a little manure or something in there if you wanted I wouldn't add a lot of manure though it's better if it's uh, that's better if it's added the in the fall not fresh And there you have it. It's about six, seven gallons worth of uh, 511 mix. Uh, I think the guy's name that uh, came up with this was, uh, his name's Al, and uh, he, uh, he, I've got his recipe for this over on uh, Garden Web on the Hot Pepper Forum on GardenWeb.com. He, uh, he does a lot with uh, mixing soils and whatnot, and, and uh, this one has become a super popular mix for growing peppers on the uh, Garden Web Pepper Forum. So that's what I'm going to give. I'm going to give it a shot this year. It's a lot of work. If it works, great. I don't know if I'll continue even if it does, but uh, um, I wanted to give it a shot anyway. So next we'll. Uh, Stick it in a pot and pot up a pepper. Okay, now we're filling up the bucket with the 511 mix. Alright. And it, it'll sink down after I water it here. This stuff's pretty dry. That's another thing I should have mentioned earlier. If you lay the bark out after you take it out of the packages, if you lay it out, spread it out real good like I had it for a couple days in the sun, it'll dry out a lot and it makes it so much easier to sift. It's about half the weight and it's a lot easier on your back. So we got that cool. Now we'll take it over here. And I got it inside of another bucket and I used a different color bucket so you could see that. Um, the reason being, there's drain holes in the bottom of the bucket. You have to have that with peppers. You don't ever want standing water in a bucket. You can see I drilled holes all along the bottom, about an inch, inch and a half apart. Pretty good size holes. Um, I don't know, probably about three sixteenths of an inch something like that um, okay and the water I normally would use a hose but I've got uh, some starter uh, fertilizer in with this uh, water and so I'm gonna catch it as it drains through here And it will drain right through, which is fine. What you need for peppers is a well-draining soil. And that's what 511 is designed to be. Very well-draining soil.
they say peppers don't like to have their feet wet so you water them and um, you, you want moist soil but you don't want soaking wet soil so that would pretty much can see it dripping through which is what I expect that's telling me it's getting all the way to the bottom and and uh, wetting wetting the whole container up Sometimes if you water and you just pour it through, um, sometimes it won't, there'll be patches inside the container that don't get, uh, that don't get saturated. So you gotta watch out for that. Anyway, there we go. That's probably not gonna be good for the bark. Anyway, so there we are. And now we'll go ahead and plant the peppers. And what I decided, I these are some peppers I bought because all my Hungarian wax died this year. I don't know why, along with several others. others. But uh, I found these at a local nursery, luckily. They're my favorite pepper, so um, I got these to augment what I grew from seed. And I decided I've got eight of these. I've decided I'm going to plant two per pot, just because I don't really need eight of them, and I don't want to have to pot up eight of them. So I'm going to pot up four or two, four pair. Anyway that there. Dig a nice little hole. And this stuff is going to be like no other soil you've ever used. But that's the way it is. It's, you know, you're going to think, geez, am I doing this right? You probably are if you've followed these instructions. What I want to do is get rid of some of this peat that they've been grown in. It's not coming off too well. And I don't want to damage the roots a whole lot, so be careful here. There we go. Getting rid of a lot of it now. Sometimes if you dunk them in, in water, swish them around a little bit. That helps a lot. There we go. It's got a nice root system on it for a pepper. A lot better than mine looked this year. So anyway, pop that one up on one side. Try to strip this one as well. There we go. Another good one. I was pretty lucky to find these Hungarian, hot Hungarian wax peppers. I have never seen them before, but I just happened to be driving past a mom and pop uh, garden center on my way back from Madison the other day and just thought I'd stop in and see what they had. And they had like two or three kinds, and it just so happened that one of them was hot Hungarian wax. So they kind of saved me this year because mine didn't do too well. I think I had one make it. And uh, like I said, the root system on most of my seedlings wasn't very good, so these should do just fine. And there you go. Peppers potted up in 511. And this is the type of soil you need to be on it because in the summer when it's 85, 90 degrees out and sunny, 
it's going to dry out quick. Probably every day you're going to have to water. Um, but the peppers seem to respond to it pretty well. So that's it.